Hello there, welcome to my channel on chemistry lessons. This is a BTEC Applied Science Unit 5 Chemistry. It's an enthalpy video and we're going to be looking at the size and sign of enthalpy changes. In terms of the specification, it fits down here. So interpretation of size and sign of values. First up though, if you don't subscribe, please do. Your support is very much appreciated and please take advantage of the likes and comments features. So if you are watching this video in the series of the playlists, you will be thinking that I've covered this already, but I haven't actually done much explanation in terms of predicting and explaining the sign. And that's what we're going to focus on here. So the sign identifies the reaction as exothermic or endothermic. If delta H is negative, that means the reaction is exothermic because the chemical energy has decreased of the chemical system and that's been released to the surroundings. So it usually is accompanied with um, a temperature increase. And the opposite is true for endothermic. The enthalpy has increased and the surrounding temperature will have decreased because the energy will have gone from the surroundings to the chemical system. Now the magnitude is linked to the amount of energy that's been transferred. And that's what we're gonna focus on in this video is to try and predict magnitude or compare magnitude of enthalpy changes. A couple of points to bring with us from GCSE that you may have forgotten about. When you break a bond, that's endothermic. It requires energy. So energy is required to break bonds. And when bonds form, energy is released. And the magnitude is going to be linked to the strength of that bond. So stronger bonds require more energy to be broken. And if a stronger bond is formed, more energy would be released. Kind of makes some sense. So let's have a look at some hydration values. Just to remind you what hydration was, it was a definition we came across um, earlier in the specification. It was the enthalpy change when one mole of aqueous ions are formed from one mole of gaseous ions. So it's going from gaseous ions to aqueous ions. And here we have the enthalpy of hydration of sodium and the enthalpy of hydration of magnesium. Now what we're going to do is we're going to predict the sign and the magnitude for both of these. So let's try and understand what's actually happening here. So at the start we have a gaseous ion by itself. There's nothing else there. It's literally a gaseous ion. But it's forming a solution, aqueous, so it's going to be surrounded by water. So you're effectively forming bonds with water. You go from gaseous to aqueous. And how does that happen? Well, water is a polar molecule. You may recall that from earlier in unit one, but water is a polar molecule. These bonds are polar. So there's an attraction between the positive ion and water molecules. And that will happen several times over. The sodium ions would be surrounded by these polar water molecules molecules and what's happening is we're actually forming bonds between the polar water and the ion. Now if we were to compare magnesium and sodium it would be a very similar scenario. I'll only draw one water molecule. So we're forming very similar bonds here between the polar water and the positive ion. Now because we're forming bonds bond forming is exothermic. So I'm predicting that both of these values will be negative. Delta H will be negative in both cases because in both cases bonds are being formed. So I'm saying that the bond, the enthalpy change for both will be negative. Furthermore, I'm going to predict that the second one will be more negative. So the, the one for magnesium, the enthalpy of hydration for magnesium will be more negative than the enthalpy hydration of sodium. And that's because I'm predicting that this bond here is stronger than this bond here because the attraction is between a two plus and the water versus a one plus and the water. So the electrostatic attraction between the magnesium and water will be greater because it's got a greater ionic charge on the magnesium. Two plus is a bigger charge than one plus. It's more attractive will form a stronger bond and will therefore be a more negative enthalpy change. 
Okay, well, let's move on and have a look at combustion. Well, we saw combustion in an earlier video. It was the definition was enthalpy change when one mole of a substance completely reacts with oxygen under standard conditions. And here we have the complete combustion of methane CH4. Now, combustion always releases energy. So I already know that this is an exothermic change. Combustion will always be exothermic. So we already know it's negative. So it's going to be a negative change. Minus VE, that's just a very lazy way of saying negative. OK, now trying to predict the magnitude is actually pretty difficult. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this into two halves. We're going to look at the reactants. I'm going to look at the products. I'm going to draw the reactants out. So we've got one methane molecule, which is a CH4, and we've got two oxygen molecules. Oxygen molecules are actually double bonded O, so it's O2. It's O double bonded to O. And in the products, we've got carbon dioxide, which looks like this, and we've got two molecules of water, which look like this. Now, what we can visualize here is we can we can actually look at the left hand side and say, well, we've got to break that bond, break that bond, break that bond, break that bond and break, break. So we've got to break all of those four bonds. So we've got to break four carbon hydrogen bonds and two double bond oxygens. So that's going to require energy. So the first process bond breaking is endothermic. So that's going to require energy. And then when we go across to the reactant, uh, the product, sorry, we're going to form this bond and form this bond. So that's two times C double bond O's. And we're going to form these four OH bonds. And that's going to be an exothermic process. Now, because this reaction overall is exothermic, we can make the prediction and the conclusion that the energy released when these bonds were formed was greater than the energy required to break these bonds. I could actually do it in a, an enthalpy profile diagram if I wanted to. I could actually show, let me do it over here, enthalpy on this axis and reaction pathway on this axis. We're going to start with the reactants here, R. We've got to put energy in to break the bonds in the reactants. And then when we form the new bonds in the products, we're going to release energy. Notice how more energy was being released here during the bond forming than was required to break the bonds here. So overall, that process ends up being exothermic. So we can visualize a reaction as breaking bonds in reactants and forming bonds in the products. If more energy is released when bonds are formed than was required to break the bonds in the reactants, that means it's exothermic. And endothermic would be the other way around. Endothermic would mean more energy was required to break the bonds in the reactants than was released when bonds in the products were formed. Therefore, it would be overall endothermic. And that's the end of that video. So good luck and hope that was useful. Thank you. Thanks for watching.